station downstairs. So I, lo I love that. I appreciate it very much, whoever put in the charging station. But um, obviously, I'm here to talk about the economics of, of parking. So the best way to start is talk about the reality of parking. And to me, it's sort of a Goldilocks type scenario, right? Too hot, too cold, just right. Too much parking, too little parking, just right. If you have too much parking, it really stresses the, eco stresses the economics of the project. Can obtain equity, can obtain debt. And of course, at some point, um, if it stresses the economics of the, of the project so much, it's just a no-go decision, right? I mean, you, at the end of the day, as developers, we, our partners, our clients, have an investment hurdle, or a threshold that we need to meet to be able to do a development project. The other thing, the other potential of building too much parking is, you know, we are incentivized and we are, we're in the development business. We want to build buildings. We want to build hotels, office, whatever it may be. But at some point, you got to be a little careful of taking the money out of one pocket to try to make your project work. For, for instance, we want to build Stormage Cares. We, we pride ourselves on building very high quality projects. What you don't want to do is have such a cost for parking, and we'll go into I'll go into more detail of in what capacity parking that you're value engineering your building so much that you're not building the quality building you want to. You're not building. You're not amenitizing it to the the way that you want it. And why does it matter for the jurisdiction? Is because in reality, they're in reality. The better the building the, that the market can bear, can bear, the higher your rental income is, the more your, the higher the value your building is worth, and generally speaking, the higher the value, the more real estate taxes that the jurisdiction, um, the jurisdiction uh, <coughs> obtains from it. So it's sort of you know win-win by the more value we create, the more value it creates for the jurisdiction as well. One last thought of building too much parking. We're in, we're in situations uh, right now where we are looking at a lot of land. And there is a certain point of how much we can pay for the land, whether it's on a per unit basis, per FAR basis, however you want to look at it. But, and it was actually interesting as a side, I was at, at a BizNow event earlier, uh, actually I guess that was last week, in Fairfax County, and one of the other developers said, you know, the issue right now is we're getting about $16.50 a square foot just in, just in, pro, in monetary proffers, and then, uh, and then another 75 pages of other development conditions. But she also mentioned about uh, parking. The mar you need to build what the market, what is appropriate for the market. So if we're just building too much parking, we, we can't afford to, um, can't afford to build what we really want to build. Uh, and the land, ultimately, that's got to come out of the land value, right? And the reason why I bring that up is, again, it just comes back to higher the land value. By building more parking doesn't necessarily mean um, that your all-in value of the project is, is going to go up. That's the Goldilocks scenario of too, too hot. The Goldilocks scenario of, of too cold is, if you don't build enough parking, you're not going to have any tenants, right? You still need to build enough parking to be competitive. At the end of the day, people still drive. I still drive. And um, although when you get to my age, it becomes more difficult. But that's beside the point. So um, really the best case scenario is to build just right. Just build um, the perfect amount of parking. One... One thing that I want to say about, you know, we do a lot of Montgomery County, and they have somewhat of a, uh, an older, I, I won't go so far as to say arcane system, but it's sort of the worst case scenario, because we get taxed annually, every year, if you don't build enough parking, right? So a lot of the jurisdictions, you will have a one-time sort of impact fee if you get, you know, if you want to build below below what code is. In Montgomery County, if you don't build to code, you're paying annually. That decreases the value of your building significantly. And what you'll ultimately see in the presentation is that 
is that we want to again build a market. And if you're if you're building too much, if you're building too high of parking ratios, then you've got to lower the pricing on your parking, which ultimately encourages because uh, you want to fill up all that parking, right, to recover your cost, which actually encourages more people to drive, right? Bring down the cost of, of, of what it costs to park, more people are going to drive. Um, if if parking requirements are reduced um, by additional taxes, like in Montgomery County as an example, um, it doesn't necessarily give you a competitive advantage. But the, I want to talk about specifically the cost of building the parking. So you know, this could be an apartment building, this could be an office building, and so forth. But generally speaking, the lower you go, the higher your cost. <coughs> Why is that? Well, first of all, your, your garage becomes more inefficient, becomes less efficient. Uh, second of all, there's obviously the risk of you don't know what's in the ground, soils, environmental, and so forth. So we look at a lot of sites where you go down one level and you might not hit any groundwater contamination. You go down two or three, it just opens up a whole nother, um, whole nother scenario of groundwater de uh, decontamination and so forth. So there's obviously a lot of scenarios that you can do for parking. We're, I'm sort of focused here on underground parking because in these urban or you know, very urban, suburban environments, generally we're all going underground parking. I'll get into the cost in a minute. You know, there are other alternatives, right? You can do above ground uh, parking separate from the building. It's very tough to do where land is, is at a premium here in Arlington County. Uh, you can tuck the parking under the building you know, if you have a lot of height. Obviously, there are some issues with that, with the aesthetics, uh, and actually from a tenant satis uh, satisfaction issue as well. But, um, or, you know, there are other alternatives like Reston Town Center that effectively has collector garages in Montgomery County, which has collector garages for a lot of different uses. Um, I just wanted to show you this really quick because this goes into our financial model. Um, I surveyed a couple of the sort of larger parking operators in the area. The operator generally receives um, uh, 30 to 40 percent of the revenue. Out of that, just as sort of for your information, 70 percent of that goes for the parking operator, not to the developer. 70 percent of that uh, is income for labor, is cost uh, for labor. 25 percent, 25 percent of it goes to uh, insurance, utilities, taxes, and so forth. And 5 percent is generally what their the parking operator actually um, is actually making. The reason why I mention that is I'm sort of going to take a media <coughs> that that we're paying the the developers are paying the operators about 35 percent. So we're running a 65 percent margin uh, net margin on our income. By the any point, uh, I know that I'm supposed to talk and then question and answer. If something doesn't make sense, just please just let me know. At the end of the day, we look at development. Uh, in a couple different ways, but one of the most important metrics we look at is return on cost. Simply speaking, return on cost is your net income over your, your cost to build. So today, and it's always a snapshot in time, it's costing between, for a hard cost, $70 to $80 a square foot to build a garage, uh, excuse me, to build per, per, um, per square foot, and $400 it's about 400 to 450 square feet per stall. <coughs> 400 is pretty darn efficient. 450 is, I know it's relatively, you know, it's only 12% margin, so, but you know, 450, hopefully you're doing better than that when you're building your parking yep. structure. Yes, that, that's including the drive, the yes. portion of the drive out necessary to get to the stall. That's exactly right. And, and, <coughs> and I mean, that's why it can vary so widely, and that's obviously why your efficiency can change as well as you're going down and so forth. But that is a gross number. Yes, sir. You mentioned how quickly costs escalate the more levels you go down. Is that 70 to 80 number for a three-story garage? Yeah, we're, we're looking at a uh, generally a two to three-story garage. Um, you know, you'll, again, you'll be a little bit less if you can do, in theory. And just to give a little story. Arlington yeah. context, um, in Roslyn, where it's bedrock that you have to excavate as opposed to dirt, 
we're at Central Place at about um, fifty to sixty thousand dollars of space, uh, just because it's much more expensive to do all that blasting, particularly when you're on top of the metro tunnel. Yeah, it's a great point, and, and I, I, I want to I'll touch on that a little bit more. And and I want to I really want you to understand these are um, these ranges of numbers. And if you're interested, you know we could always run a sensitivity analysis, and Sarah can send it to you a, a sort of the range. But at the end of the day. I don't think the conclusion is going to be different. Sort of makes the argument more, but yes, sir. While you're on this subject, what is the slope of you know the first level, the second level, the third level? Uh, that's a, that is a good question. Um, let me talk to my construction folks and get back to exactly what we're what we're looking at now. And obviously, it depends on the the, the geometry of the site, the size of the site. Um, uh, but I want to before I quote exactly, let me get let me get you a number. Uh, I want to be accurate about it. Um, one mistake. So this that, might be you said that forty thousand per space might be an average for a two or a three. two to two to three two to three level parking structure. So it could be, but you'll find out twenty thousand for the top level. In theory, I don't. Uh, yeah, I mean. It's not twenty thousand. Yeah, it's not twenty. Okay. Yeah, it's not twenty. It's not 20,000, but uh, the point is taken that in theory, um, you know, sort of like what we talked about in Bethesda, where we're reaching a point where we're having to blast. I mean, listen, if you're having to blast, well, you don't normally blast right at grade, at right ground level, but, um, but you do become more, less efficient as you go down. But it's, it's a great point, and, and I will get a number for you. Um, what, you know, one mistake that a lot of people make is when we talk about the just in terms of the language, is <clears throat> we talk about the hard cost. There's the soft cost as well, obviously, which includes architecture, engineering, GNA, uh, debt, other carry costs, real estate taxes. That tax on about another 25%. Um, so in addition to the hard cost, another 25%. So for our analysis, you can see that we use the 31,875, sort of right in the middle there of the matrix for our hard cost and added on another 25% for, uh, for soft cost as well. Now, when I'm taking a look at the revenue here, you know, it's going to vary. Your revenue per space obviously is going to vary. For instance, um, I did a quick survey. Boston is closer to $100 uh, a space. And as you get closer in um, Roslyn, you know, roughly $150. $175. <coughs> um, what's, what's, you'll need, you'll, what's interesting about per, this analysis. Per, what, per month per space. Per month per space. Per month, per space. And that's a market rate. I could, assuming I was a tenant in the building, that's what I would pay outside of the lease. Or is that part of the lease? No. Okay. It could be a part of a lease. It could be outside of a lease. Structure both ways. The, um, for our argument sake today, I took $100 uh, per month. The conclusion will ultimately be the same, whether it's 100 150 and so forth. But 12 months a year, simple math, $100 per month, $1,200 per year of gross revenue per space. On the expense side, though, as we discussed, the operator takes 30 to 40%. Again, we're going to use roughly uh, that our net income is 65% of that. So roughly, we're making $65 per month per space. On an annual basis, we're making about $780 per, per, uh, per year per space. Um, so when you look at our return on cost, and I'm sort of jumping to the bottom of the slide here because this is important. This assumes that your garage is fully occupied. This assumes that you, you've hit the market perfectly, right? You've got every space, you've got that individual space effectively filled every month, every day, every month. So to finish the, uh, to finish the calculation for our return on cost or yield, we have $780 net income per month. In this scenario, it's costing us $40,000 per space uh, to build, which effectively gets you a 1.95% yield, which, which you'll see in a second uh, is actually probably on the high side uh, because now we're gonna have to gross it up for uh, for not having full occupancy. This is an analysis of <coughs> code versus market. Let's just take a typical 300,000 square foot office building. 
and say the code is two spaces per thousand. Um, you know, I'm not. I think I think you had one study that said actual utilization in the actual utilization in the Ross and Boston corridor is 1.4, but you know that varies pretty significantly between uh, being within close to metro all the way up through the corridor um, and so forth. Typical FAR, you know, ten dollars. Uh, excuse me, a, a ten FAR. Uh, and you're building two spaces, again, per 1,000 square feet. So again, we take what we uh, just calculated, 100 bucks a month, uh, 12 months a year, $1,200 um, annually, 65%, $780 net. But what we do is, when we're, trying to dis when we're trying to calculate the value of that space, if you say your investment hurdle is a 7.5%, then that value of the space is ten thousand four hundred dollars, but it costs forty thousand dollars to build, right? So um, you're effectively the value of that you're losing thirty thousand dollars. Okay. Um, just as an example, the over think, the life of the building. Uh, well, when we cast you in, in, in an upfront hit to your land value, it's going to come out of your land. Yeah, I mean, so. If we were to go, let's just say though we were going to go sell this building tomorrow, right. and we were receiving that income on it, and we sold it at seven and a half cap, um, based cap rate is uh, uh, NOI over over sale price, okay. just as a metric. That means that we're actually losing twenty nine thousand six hundred dollars when we sell that space. It's a discount on future value, right? So right. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. On the anticipated now. Having said all that, um, I'm really jumping ahead. Having said all that, what you got to be careful about when you're evaluating, um, you know, people say, well, so wait a second, if we build, if we, if you build less parking, that's sort of just money in the developer's pocket. Uh, two thoughts on that. Not entirely true because, first of all, we go to work every day and effectively write checks. To go to work, right? We write checks to build a building. So if I do less parking, instead of us writing $20 million equity check, maybe it's an $18 million check or $15 million check. But what it does do is dilutes your, dilutes your ultimate value. What you're ultimately trying to accomplish, again, is to build, to build a market where you're not, um, at some point, if there's too much impact fees or Montgomery County, where you're getting annual tax, you might as well build a parking, right? Because at least there, in theory, you can get some income back. But if you're paying an annual tax, that's just money out the door. You might as well build a parking. Uh, again, sort of same thing, even if it's a one-time impact fee, there is a point where, call it a break even, or what you make, there's a point where, again, you might as well just build a parking because at least you can get some some residual value, whether you're only losing thirty thousand dollars of space as compared to losing more. What you ultimately want to try to accomplish, as well as, you know, I think jurisdictions, um, there are a lot of different ways the jurisdictions can can gain income. So, as we meant, as I mentioned before, if you build that much more parking, you're going to compel people to drive, right? So other than the environmental factors and so forth, you know, the more people take Metro, the more people that ride buses, the rider, that increases the ridership, increases the revenue for the infrastructure for Metro, uh, both the existing structure and hopefully to pay for more infrastructure. Um, there's alternatives like smart cars and Zipcar. Up until a couple months ago when I just bought this little Prius, um, I took Zipcar for a decade, and obviously it's good for business for Zipcar, but it, there's a tax on that as well. So the jurisdictions are taking taxes on on alternatives like Zipcar as well. The final, recomm the final not recommendation, the final thing I mentioned is, you know, bike racks um, obviously have other benefits as well, or or walking. Um, including employers, health insurance costs, and as I mentioned before, the environmental benefit. Okay. Do, you, 
Yeah. And I'm out of time, so, you know, so please. Well, it's a good time. Right, right. <laughs> so you have a lot of specifics on the cost of parking. You, you have ranges on how much it costs, and this is for you guys too, how much it costs to <coughs> bike lockers, showers, kind of the things that, that support the alternative modes, or if you don't have it, could you provide that to us? Because I think yeah. that's an important mm -hmm. data point for us to think about. Sure, that's a great point. I mean, um, obviously the... Uh, there's a cost to a bike rack, but it is significantly less than, oh, uh, yeah. so, absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But technology is also changing so that, the, you know, you can have higher end <coughs> bike lockers and shower mm -hmm. facilities and, and, you know, real-time data for, for transit. So, yep. Yeah. The, um, you know, I just want to conclude and you know, sort of reopen up the questions, but, you know, to, um, sort of the answer is you want to build a market. Right, because it builds, it allows us to build more buildings. And assuming that we're all agreed upon that uh, that we want to build buildings, we want more growth for the area, smart growth. Then you build to the market, and it increases your tax base for everybody. The more we build, the more taxes uh, are generated. Um, you know, in theory, if you do it right. Uh, the more people you bring in, period. Yes, sir. So how do you do it right? I know you're out of time, but that's, that's what we want to do. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, if, if you could just tell you us, and then we can just go home. Yeah. 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 How do you yeah. figure yeah. out yeah. I mean, to me, how do we look at markets? So first of all, uh, we use a lot of different consultants, right? So we're, in any development, we're you know, hiring a Wells and Associates or traffic engineer to look at, to look at traffic, um, traffic patterns, traffic habits. I will tell you, I think that there is a point where you you want to, you need to change people's behaviors and patterns. And if you, if the car manufacturers, this is, I, I'm sort of getting a second, the car manufacturers are obviously out there trying to give incentives. I got a nice $2,500 credit to go buy my, on my taxes here, to go buy my Prius. They're incentivizing us to drive more, right? We need to be, in, in to me, in environments like Arlington County, that has such outstanding infrastructure, we need to be changing people's mindset to use the public transportation and be building you know, communities that are live, work, play, that you're, you're not driving far off or, or traveling far off. Um, and you gotta build, at the end of the day, so you wanna change people's habits that they're, that they're taking, that they're actually using the, using the infrastructure appropriately. Um, but to me, it is, it is building to market, right? I mean, but what his question is, is what is the calculation so, that is well, done? To so, put it another way, my understanding is that the way a typical developer, and this is going to sound, going to sound really not nice, so I only mean it for <laughs> I get yelled at all the time by my citizens, by, and by my wife. Purposes. But my general impression is that some developers, no one in this room, but that some developers, the way they figure out how much parking is that they ask their bankers how much parking they need to build in order to get the project funded, and the bankers check to see what the last six buildings actually built, and say that's the market, and then the bankers tell the developer, and that's how it's figured out. So if, if, if it's that, some other way that you figure out yeah, what the market yeah. is, we'd love to know. Yeah, I'll go, I'm sorry, I apologize. Yeah. I get off top of here. I will tell you, but and, and Matt, please, but uh, the answer is no. The answer is absolutely. Okay, so let's hear the alternative. The, the, the answer is it's meaning, not, meaning that's not that's it, not how yeah. it's it's not the bankers. It's not the bankers, the bankers it, but it, it's, telling. you just replace bankers with brokers, uh, and that is you know we have JBG, we have commercial leasing arm, and so I would go to Paul Atkins and Jill Gabo, who for twenty years have been leasing in the DC area. Jill predominantly actually in the RB corridor, and I might say I want to build a building with no parking, and she'd say, Are you kidding me? You know, like that's that's not going to lease, and it would depend though on on where we're trying to lease to. So, for instance, uh, in Roslyn or in Boston, I would say with Central Place or with 800 North Lee, those are both primarily geared towards some of the tenants we've got in the past: corporate executive board, Deloitte, Accenture. They pack a lot of people in there. Um, it's relatively young, so that's going to skew more towards people who are you know willing to take alternative methods of transportation, but. 